G'day guys and gal, although pretty much every faction within Warhammer 40k is pretty horrific, the space fascists are able to claim moral high ground over the literal forces of hell. However, some elements of the Imperium, the good guys, are so vicious and brutal you wouldn't be completely wrong for mistaking them for Cornite Berserkers, especially if you are unlucky enough to get in their way. No other Space Marine chapter captures this better than the Flesh Terrors, borderline insane, extremely bloodthirsty warriors. They often kill just as many allies as enemies. The only thing holding them together is their legendary chapter master Gabriel Seth, a dude who doesn't take shit from anyone, embraces his inner darkness, but also somehow doesn't let it totally consume him. A man that is both a vicious savage and a prideful warrior at the same time. The true successor to the legend, Nisira Mitz, and someone worth talking about. Before we get started, getting lean or jacked is actually surprisingly easy when you know what to eat. Unfortunately, knowing your macros or counting calories can be challenging and a straight up pain in the ass. That is why Factor is legitimately one of the best brands for being the most bangable version of yourself. Usually there's some kind of negative trade-off for eating healthy food. Maybe it takes too long to prepare, maybe it's too expensive, maybe it doesn't taste good. But Factor ticks off all those boxes by coming as a package of pre-cooked delicious microwave meals with excellent macro and micronutrition. The value is actually incredible as well, especially with my discount code, which can push the meals to as low as $5.50 per serving. It even overcomes the usual issues that microwave meals have by constantly mixing up the menu each week as well as never freezing the meals so they maintain their freshness. If you're trying to bulk up and gain some muscle then choose the protein plus meals. If you're trying to lose fat then pick the calorie smart meals. If you just want healthy, delicious meals without the fuss of picking, then Chef's Choice is your friend. This is something that is impossible to regret at least trying. Especially by using my link in code POGMAJOROCT50, you'll get 50% off your first box, and if you don't like it, you can then cancel at any time. Cheers to Factor for sponsoring this video. Today we'll go over why Gabriel Seth is such a beast, focusing more on his in-law highlights rather than his entire chronological lore. Now let's get into it. Blood Angels are a walking contrast. On one hand, they are noted to be the most regal, handsome space marines in the Imperium, often pursuing various arts, but on the other hand, when they lose their shit and either fall to the Black Rage or Red Thirst, they get so vicious that they make a world eater look like a pacifist. Pretty much all Blood Angels are ashamed of their dark side, except Gabriel Seth, who thinks it's dope as fuck. A mark of Sanguinius, not a curse. But Gabriel also knew that losing his mind and eating his own guardsmen mid-battle wasn't a good look. Hence, when Gabriel took over as Chapter Master of the Flesh Terrors, he vowed to restore the name and glory of the Flesh Terror chapter. Instead of supporting allied troops, the Flesh Terrors would be unleashed deep into enemy lines, away from allies, to cause shock and terror, as well as being allowed to indulge their dark desires away from prying eyes. This has slowly been taking them from a universally hated chapter that has caused more collateral damage than 9-11 on the daily, to a highly effective force that people are now beginning to admire, even if they still don't want to fight anywhere near them. Gabriel's biggest issue that he faced upon taking over his chapter master was when it was revealed that Flesh Terror Gene Seed had deteriorated to a point where the Black Rage and Red Thirst was a very common outcome. Warriors who had fallen to either of those were basically walking corpses in terms of their lifespan, with them either dying in the next battle or needing to be put down for their own good. On top of that, the Flesh Terror Battle Doctrine was notable for suffering immense casualties every battle, hence at the current rate, the Flesh Terrors had about 200 years or less before extinction. This was grim as they were literally a second founding chapter, being created at a similar time to other chapters like the Black Templars or Crimson Fists. Their first chapter mark, Master, Nasir Amit, fought side by side with Sanguinius himself and was one of his closest advisors. They had thousands of years of history, however it looked like their legacy would be a shameful one, a tale of a lack of self-control. Hence Gabriel decided that if the Flesh Terrors were to die, they would die as heroes, remembered not for eating the baby by accident one time, but for massacring the enemies of humanity. So that's the basic synopsis of Seth and his Flesh Terrors, but before we dive into his best moments, I did want to spend a bit of time discussing his personality and attitude, as he is actually a pretty complicated guy which is surprising, as I think most people just perceive him as this super angry dude that loves killing shit, and yeah look, he's a massive prick without many friends, but he is also one of the most steadfast and reliable men in the entire Blood Angels roster. Seth is a ruthless, no bullshit kind of guy. You need to earn his respect, but once you do, no one has your back like he does. A good example of this is when the Blood Angels suffered a shitload of casualties and were on the brink of extinction, Dante pleaded with the successor chapters of Sanguinius to donate some of their Space Marine recruits that would then be taken and turned into Blood Angels. Seth saw this as Dante being weak, 
unique. That, combined with the fact that the flesh terrorists really don't have men to spare to begin with, meant that he basically told Dante to eat a dick. He even went as far as to suggest that the Blood Angels should be disbanded and Baal handed over to the flesh terrorists. Obviously, it wasn't a genuine suggestion, however, Seth was an asshole that got a laugh out of pissing off Dante. However, there was a battle soon after this in which Dante saved Seth's life and deeply impressed him, proving his worth as the leader of the Blood Angels. Hence, Seth handed over some of his recruits, which prompted the other chapters to follow suit. Another element of Seth is that he likes the most direct route to victory, and he also likes to stick to his strengths. He hasn't curbed the fury of the Flesh Terrors, he just directs it better. They still get censured time and time again, as even when they fight their enemies, they are often so war crimey that it puts off their allies. But Seth uses the Night Lord's logic defense. Is it better to have a day of intense slaughter or a year of attrition warfare? The overall point I'm trying to make is that Seth isn't this noble caring guy in a chapter full of monsters whom he is trying to bring over to the light. He's the alpha monster amongst monsters who knows that the best way to fulfill his role to Sanguinis and the Emperor is to embrace that part of themselves and try not to kill their allies in the process. One of Seth's pretty badass moments was when he took on Astrath the Grim, the High Chaplain of the Blood Angels who was responsible for keeping the Black Rage in check across the Sons of Sanguinius. This means he will often travel throughout the galaxy to find rogue pockets of blood angels who have fallen to the Black Rage but were never brought back to Baal. He would then give them honorable deaths, allowing them to fight him. As such, you can imagine how much of a beast in combat Astrath is if he literally practices against berserkers. Keep in mind that a blood angel who has fallen to the Rage has a massively increased strength and speed. On one of his culling missions, Astrath encountered and killed some raged up flesh terrors, something that was a huge no-no to Seth as he believed it was up to him how he would deal with his fallen sons, not some other dude. Hence Seth walked into Astrath's chamber and began insulting the shit out of him before then punching him in the face a bunch of times. Astrath is one of the most respected blood angels to ever live, so for Seth to walk into his house and begin beating his ass was hilarious. Unfortunately for Seth, Astrath is even more of a beast in battle than he is, so after putting up a good showing, Seth got the shit kicked out of him. But he didn't care. He said that for every minute he's getting his ass beat here is a minute that Astrath isn't killing his brothers. He then said if Astrath kills even one more flesh terror, he would come back with the kill team and put him down. Seth really enjoys giving his brothers death threats. Dude does it all the time at the most inappropriate occasions. During the third war for Armageddon, Gabriel led his flesh terrors against the orcs and did something very, very few others ever could. He made the orcs feel genuine fear. The flesh terrors were so brutal in battle, as well as after the battle they would begin to eat the corpses, that the orcs no longer had fun fighting them. They would actively avoid combat with the flesh terrors and would even retreat before firing a single shot if they knew they were going up against Gabriel and his boys. This is awesome, but it also kind of ended badly. In one battle, the orcs were charging an Imperial militia gunline. The flesh terrors deep struck into the orcs' rear and basically hammer and anvil the orcs' formation, trapping them in a kill zone and massacring them. However, the flesh terrors' bloodlust was so severe that upon cutting through the orcs from the rear, they continued to charge and ended up massacring the Imperial militia forces as well. Not idealio. So it's clear that while Seth is doing his best in terms of not trying to massacre his allies, he isn't always successful. Issues like this eventually caused the Inquisition to send an agent to try and infiltrate the flesh terrors and uncover their dark secrets to gather evidence to declare them traitors. Gabriel uncovered the infiltration and in revenge for the deception, he massacred the Inquisitor's retinue and then had the captured Inquisitor's mind psychically linked to that of a flesh terror who had recently fallen to the Black Rage. The Inquisitor immediately went insane. Although he did reclaim his sanity, the experience had rocked the Inquisitor as he realized what the flesh terrors had to battle with every day, and if it only took him a few seconds to fall, then who was he to judge those who were still resisting? Then he just straight up quit being an Inquisitor. However, incidences like this eventually caused the other Blood Angel chapter masters to hold a trial for Seth and his chapter's crimes. They threw example after example of him fucking up battles where he committed way too many war crimes, instances of him killing allied forces or fighting other loyal chapters. Time and time again, Gabriel defended the actions, insulting the shit out of the other chapter masters in the process. He even offered up his own life as long as his chapter could endure. However, eventually Seth was found guilty, with his chapter being ordered to be dismantled and absorbed into the other successors. Seth himself would remain imprisoned on Baal until death. However, at that moment, Astrath entered the chamber to defend Seth. He basically said, yes, Seth is a fucking asshole and I personally think he should eat shit, but he's our asshole. For every drop of loyal blood he has spilled, the enemies of mankind have bled oceans. The dude is a living weapon and was just too important to lock away. Hence, Dante allowed Seth and his flesh terrorists to continue. He was still found guilty, but his punishment moved shame instead of the loss of his chapter. This does beg the question though, did Gabriel and the flesh terrorists deserve to be condemned? Well, let me just mention another thing that happened on Armageddon that was pretty awesome and then you can decide. An Inquisitor basically commandeered Seth and his forces for a special mission. Seth was repeatedly 
appalled at how callous she was with the lives of so many civilians and guardsmen, using a city as a distraction against the orcs while Seth wanted to save it, sacrificing an entire regiment to buy them a bit more time while Seth wanted to fight side by side with them. Sure, Seth and his brothers have anger issues, but they are still honorable warriors. They aren't proud of collateral damage. When it's revealed that the Inquisitor was actually a radical and the mission was to find a tech heresy device that she could use to trigger the Black Rage and all Blood Angels, she then used it on him which caused Seth to kill one of his honor guard before he was able to overcome the Black Rage and snap out of it. This obviously made Seth fucking furious. The Inquisitor is able to escape in a ship to orbit. She also deliberately chose those ships to be hospital ships full of wounded guardsmen and civilians, believing that Seth wouldn't be able to attack them due to his own conscience, duty and not wanting to look like a traitor. However, she got something very wrong about Seth. He was not appalled at her sacrificing thousands of people in their mission because of his moral compass, it's because it was unnecessary and wasteful. Hence, Seth was able to infiltrate a squad of Death Company Berserker Flesh Terrors on board the hospital ship, who then proceeded to massacre every single person on board, which included over 50,000 wounded guardsmen when the ship went into the warp. They also killed the Inquisitor, which saved the Blood Angels from the Black Rage. It all comes back to Gabriel willing to do anything to get shit done. Gabriel would go on to be one of the key commanders against the Tyranid Hordes during the devastation of Baal, taking over command when Dunn was wounded, which shows how much the two warriors' relationship has evolved. The Flesh Terror is going from borderline excommunicated to a respected chapter in their own right. With the return of Gilliman and the arrival of the Primaris, you would have thought Seth would be happy to finally restore the ranks of the Flesh Terrors and fix their whole extinction issue. However, Seth is one of the few chapter masters who openly despise the Primaris, seeing them as Ultramarines in red armor and not worthy of the mantle of Flesh Terror. See, Gabriel is proud of the willpower it takes to hold back the Black Rage. So for new Marines to arrive who are genetically more resistant to it really rubs him the wrong way. He wanted to test out a new Primaris captain, so he basically just insulted the shit out of him, threatened him with death, and then challenged him to a fight. Just classic Seth things. The Primaris accepts, and within seconds is beaten into a bloody pulp on the brink of death. Gabriel even lets the dude get a few punches in and was wildly unimpressed. However, since then, due to a few Primaris flesh terrors falling to the Black Rage, Gabriel has gained respect for them as he sees that they too must still battle the call of the Black Rage. For a final note about Gabriel's beastliness, the dude wields a massive mastercrafted chainsaw that he spins around himself in battle, literally becoming a human blender. While he is also known to be extremely good at headbutting people, able to crack ceramite with his unarmored forehead without knocking himself out. Just thought that would be a fun little visual for you to imagine. If you enjoyed the video and you want to support the channel, then pick up some magical merch, t-shirts, a hoodie, and even a bathrobe, only available for a few more days, so definitely check it out. Hit the subscribe button and hit the real subscribe button for more beastly content. Join the Discord for more memes, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.